Good morning, everyone. I'm Jen Houston, owner of the Artsy Fartsy Gallery. I'm a full-time independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canmore, Alberta, Canada. Welcome to Fun Friday! Fun Fridays, we always do some kind of fun fold or a technique or, I don't know, something messy. <laughs> Today is going to be about a fun fold. Um, I saw Connie Stewart do this fun fold and I immediately thought of the outdoor barbecue set that we are have been playing with all week so far. Let me just show you that. Um, this outdoor barbecue set is absolutely adorable. Definitely lends itself to be masculine if um, you are still kind of, you know, you need ideas for masculine cards. This is definitely a fun set to play with as you've seen all week. So uh, if you purchase this set, it's only $26 in Canada, which is actually a very inexpensive set. Um, or you place a $30 order with me, I'm going to send you some silver foil paper. Yay! Which we have also been using all week, kind of to accent and embellish and, and all those kinds of things. Because I don't know, I don't know about you, but I masculine cards I tend not to add a whole bunch of say rhinestones or pearls, <laughs> and so the silver foil is just kind of enough there that to to add a little sparkle and bling without it looking overtly obvious. But uh, so here we go. Um, I see lots of people popping on. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining today. And uh, yeah, feel free to chit chat amongst yourselves as I work away here. I do go back at the end and uh, look through all of your comments and see if there's any questions that I should answer or, you know, some new ideas that I should try out. Um, and uh, no, I always appreciate uh, you popping on for sure. So. Thanks for sharing this video. I appreciate that as well. Um, all right, let's get rolling. I'm just going to switch screens a little here. Oh, there's my big finger. I think we're ready to go. Okay. So, of course, we're still playing with that barbecue set, right? Today's the last day. Um, it's it, time's running out to actually get this barbecue set, so be aware there. Um, it's retiring, it's on the retirement list. So, as of June 2nd, at the very maximum, um, you will be able to order this now. If it sells out before that, no tears, no tears, because I warned you. <laughs> so, here we go. This is what. I'm gonna make here. Here's the little barbecue, and this opens up and goes like so. Isn't that fun? So from the outside, it looks like this kind of plain Jane card, but then you open her up, and there you go. Isn't that neat? So I've learned a few things since this card, kind of to help things, you know, be a little smoother, be a little less. Like, for instance, I learned this. Okay, you forget, you know. <laughs> um, when you color with Stampin' Blends, it kind of bleeds through the paper. So, um, when we do this again, uh, I have a little solution for that. On this card, I'm going to actually take a piece of Whisper White and cover this up. I think it'll just finish it off really well. Also, when you're when I was doing this step here, um, I closed it and it got some little ink stains, I guess, onto this portion of, with, of the card. And so I, I covered that up with another piece of Whisper White. And lastly, I put the dimensionals on the wrong side. So, you know, and of course I went heavy duty with the dimensionals, right? To make sure it's stuck on here and here it was all on the wrong side so anyways we'll uh, we'll get this done second time will be better go around than the first um, here is the envelope the coordinating envelope that I used so this by the way was Knight of Navy 
smoky slate. There's that brick embossing folder. I had to keep playing with it. It's I, I just love it. Um, any other colors? That uh, I think those are the two main colors. Um, I did outline everything and whatnot in light balmy blue. I don't know if you can see those little um, barbecued items in balmy blue as I did that on the envelope flap. And then, of course, there's those little flames that I like to add on there. Just reminds me of barbecuing. <laughs> Hopefully your experience is not like mine. My lips are dry already. Thank you. I, thanks for sharing, Jennifer. I really appreciate that. And Sherry, thank you so much. Okay. So, of course, like how I do, I'm going to switch things up just a tad. And, of course, all these measurements and things I'm going to put on my blog later on today. Just so you don't have to madly write everything down. But this is a basically a normal card base. Pretend this... Okay, we'll go like this. Pretend this is a normal card base. <laughs> Basic gray, eight and a half by five and a half, folded in half like a book. Okay, then I took one of my stitched rectangle framelits, dies, dies, and ran it through the big shot like so, which ended up cutting out this piece. So basically you're making that frame on the front of your card. Okay, that's that one. Then we're gonna get a piece of Whisper White and we're gonna cut this at eight by five and a quarter. You're gonna fold it in half at four, and I don't know if you can see this, but score at two. Okay, that's just gonna help us get that foldy piece, I suppose. So, here we go, we can fold that in half. My chair is beyond squeaky today. I've got to get that fixed on the weekend. <laughs> driving me nuts and then you're just going to fold this portion back and that's kind of our little mechanism I suppose to make things a little more exciting in our card so just so you kind of see how this works so when you open this up this is going to be glued in here and this is going to lay down flat see that then this piece will get glued onto here. We're going to decorate these inside portions as well, but just kind of the, you get the gist of how this works. It's really quite simple, actually. It's, it's, it wasn't that difficult. It took me longer to color than it did to make this card. So, you know, like you could add um, flowers to this. You could change this up to be, oh, goodness, all sorts of different uh, versions for sure um, you could even do if you didn't want the rectangle switch it up and make you know the stitch nested label dies or make you know a nice oval or a circle all as well okay so our next thing was to I have a piece of whisper white that's actually going to go in here um, I think it'll just help make it a little more sturdy too. And if we do, you know, close this up and we get a little ink on here, no big deal. Um, if we don't need it, we don't need it. It is measuring at uh, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Okay, so you know that one. Then I have a piece of crumb cake here that I ran through the big shot with the brick embossing folder. You'll, you're gonna wanna get, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the 3D embossing folders, they usually say if they're 3D on in the catalog, you're gonna wanna get, if you don't have any intentions of getting the new stamp and cut and emboss machine, you may want to get this for your old Big Shot so that it fits these 3D embossing folders with your current machine. It just 
it's the right size. Um, if you just use your plate, it's just a little too thin. You can, I mean, you can beef it up by putting some cardstock in, um, or you can just get the plate. Um, you, it's too thick if you add two, if you sandwich the two plates, or if you sandwich the embossing folder with two plates, then it's too thick to run through the machine. So like I say, this is just right. And I do have this in the list of supplies on my website for this week when I used that, that embossing folder. All right, so here we go. Crumb cake, this is measuring at one and seven eighths by five and one eighth. It's one, two little things less than, <laughs> less than five and a quarter. Yes. So this is a little smaller size than, of course, the card base. Hopefully that makes sense. That purple co conversion plate just makes the using the Big Shot faster and easier, right? It isn't, it isn't expensive, exactly, Lisa. So um, definitely worth it if you're going to keep the Big Shot. Because I think they're going to keep coming out with fun textured embossing folders. And, and you want um, the ability to have the... 75 <laughs> yeah 25 dollars good yeah no no um gosh i can't remember how much it is i can look that up but it's not that bad then again i this time instead of coloring right on here i'm actually going to do all my coloring and my stamping on a piece of whisper white and then i'm going to glue it to the paper that way nothing's going to bleed through on the back little thing I learned and this is the same size is as that crumb cake layer so I what did I say that was uh, one and seven eighths by five and an eighth I believe so I pre stamped free colored because you don't need to sit and watch me color um, these were colored with the stamp and blends I outlined those little um, items with this one I did light pool party. Switch things up a little. All right, next we have, here again, thank goodness something's going there. Uh, this was one size smaller in the rectangle dies than this layer, just to be aware. So I pre-colored this, of course, with the Stampin' Blends, and I don't know if you can see that little pool party outline there, just to tie things in. And then I wanted to take my pool party dauber and add some color kind of behind. So I'm just ever so lightly, just randomly run, you know, run it over top of the white portions like so. I don't know, it just softens that white, doesn't it? Then for the front, I wanted to use this thing, well done. I put it on smoky slate and then kind of mounted it on that silver foil paper because it just, I don't know, it looks like a barbecue, doesn't it? Some metal. So I'm just going to trim that off. I'm going to glue this on like so. Uh, I'm going to use my liquid glue because the backs of the foil paper tend to be a little bit um, slippery, a little bit different. And so to make sure it doesn't come off, I'm going to use the liquid glue for this. Plus it'll give you a little time to wiggle that in place. And there we go. Cute, cute. Okay, next let's add this to that gray label to kind of make a little bit of a border. I love watching my facial expressions. <laughs> oh dear. See why I had to quit teaching? No. <laughs> it was more to do than my facial expression. Um, yeah, when, you know, some, some children just 
cry your patience and it's all you can do to, you know, stay smiling and you don't want to like, you're biting your tongue. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, no, I really quit because I had fibromyalgia and depression. That's, and frankly, I'm, it's exhausting. <laughs> okay. On to this little piece of paper here. Actually, let's let's do our little brick pattern here. So, like we've done for the last couple of days, this brick. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna start with crumb cake over top of the crumb cake paper to kind of give it some texture. And if it's not enough, then we will add maybe some some soft suede. Oh, sheesh! That was a little darker than I had it intended. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I burnt the, the barbecue burnt the wall. <laughs> oh, sheesh. There we go. I think it's dark enough. <laughs> I was supposed to go the other direction first. Anyways, it, it makes it antique looking, doesn't it? So we'll just skip the soft suede. All is well. Okay. Now, let's glue. Oh, I just want to make sure this isn't. Let's add this to our first little panel here. I'm going to use my liquid glue because it's bumpy. You want that glue to kind of seep into some of those bumps and make sure it's stuck. So there will be ju just a thin border around the outside of white. And let's open this up and we're going to actually glue this portion right in here. This I could have used snail tape, but since this is readily available, let's just go with it. It does look cool. It just surprised me. <laughs> I should have gone this direction first. Then I find it if it's it, it hits all those larger more raised portions and then if you go really lightly this direction up and down then it kind of fills in some of those gaps i saw it, so i i did it backwards but it is kind of cool isn't it definitely makes it not look matchy matchy or intended to be fancy <laughs> all right next thing Let's glue this right into our card base. So, um, yeah, I'll use this. You could use your snail as well. So I'm making my Father's Day card, by the way. Um, I don't know if he likes to barbecue. He does. I think he'd like to go to a restaurant and have barbecue, but whatever. Um, and there we go. Here's our little little section so far. Isn't that neat? All right, so now we're going to attach this piece. So by putting it right inside where it came from, I'm going to take my take your pick tool and just give myself some little marks where I need to put the dimensionals. So one here, and I'm just kind of gently lifting up this piece just to check underneath about where that brick layer kind of ends. So now I'm going to make sure I put the dimensionals on the correct side. So I have a wee tiny pinpoint mark on both ends here that I can see. I'm just going to lay something on there so I know, okay, that's the side I need dimensionals. <laughs> now you could glue it down, but I just thought, ah, uh, let's, um, let's pop. Okay, here we go. So, 
making sure I'm inside that the little pin mark points. Um, where'd he go? Okay. And cut another one here. These strips work great for these kinds of things. Am I out of the normal size? I can really just do one more there. Okay, make sure, yep, we're going on to the brick. So I had my happiness course again last night. Learn something. Um, it was about um, savoring moments, um, savoring photograph like memories from photographs yada yada so okay so I'm just once again I'm gonna lay this inside so I'm gonna start with this side first because there's no dimensionals on this side and I can kind of fit it where it's gonna go and then just let it fall down no because that's stuck on I think we're good we're good we're good oh it's a little off that's all right. My dad will figure it out. <laughs> I can't get my top fan badge to display. My daughter's trying to figure it out. I don't even know what that's for. Do you? What is that for? Oh, don't look at my bone folder. My Stampin' Up! one's over there somewhere. It's a, it's a not Stampin' Up! one. Anyways, okay. I forget what I was talking about. Oh, this course, class. Okay, so we also talked about um, good deeds and how they help, good deeds and um, giving and how they help our mood, make us happier. Did you know that, I didn't realize this, but um, a giver of a good deed or of something actually gets four times the reward benefits compared to the receiver. So the giver gets four times the rewards more than the receiver, okay? So, and they said it's because um, you get the, the joy of being excited to send a surprise, so that lifts your mood, right? You're excited to send somebody something. Um, on this insert, I'm just going to put that saying, uh, Dad Like You is rare. Um, not sure if I should put what color I should do. I think I'm going to go with, let's go with crumb cake. Because I think, I don't know, that basic gray is kind of almost blackish, which is kind of me. Okay, make sure we're going the right direction. I'm just gonna put it up on my head. Sorry if my head's in the way. I haven't even put the sticker on this one yet. <laughs> Jeez. A dad like you is rare. And let's see. We could Put the little flame we can leave it alone we can add some smoky slate like I did the last time we could add some blue I have the little pool party here maybe we'll do that let's go with blue so you're excited to send something out which is gets you in a better mood um, and just thinking about blessing somebody else being a help to somebody else also boosts your mood um the and then usually when you give somebody something you get appreciation and recognition and so that boosts your mood and lastly um you kind of have an anticipation and a hope 
that the receiver will kind of pay it forward. They'll, you know, they'll kind of love what happened to them and do it to somebody else. And so I just, I, what immediately came to mind was card giving. Like, we're excited to send a surprise to somebody. We, you know, just thinking about, oh, that this is going to brighten somebody's day, you know, this person's day. Um, hopefully it comes at the right time. That just boosts your mood, right? And then you tend to get, you know, oh, thank you. That was so nice. And, and you get the appreciation for sending the card. And then you hope that they love that experience so much that they, in turn, will send a card to somebody and, and just kind of start that cycle all over again. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I thought it was, I thought it was really neat. So, um, what do you think? Are we done here? Let's add some flex. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just loosen things up here. I could have done that actually on the brick. Could have kind of, you know, added some flex in there. There. And I think when you put this on a separate sheet, a separate sheet, as opposed to doing it right here, see how that pool party kind of stands out a little nicer? It kind of frames it with the white underneath. So I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. And then I'm just going to write my own little message on the inside there. I went on the hunt for some Father's Day, a Happy Father's Day stamp. Um, what I found was um, the Geared Up Garage, which is actually hanging out next uh, catalog too. So this will be around for a while. Happy Father's Day. There's that one. I mean, any of these could be, I don't know, well, best dad. You're a classic. I think that would work. Um, best catch had for you, Dad. It's not necessarily Happy Father's Day. Or you could do the You're the Best. Oh, I could have used catch and then up for that, that one ketchup card. Just noticed that. Or it's your day. Like those would be kind of neat on the envelope. And then on Itty Bitty Greetings, they have World's Best Father. So there again, it doesn't say Happy Father's Day, but you know you get what they mean all right so let's close this guy up you know I kind of wondered if I should have stamped something on here I could make a frame that you know just kind of goes around this portion but I kind of almost want this outside to be blah so then when you open it up you're like oh what's happening here oh you know <laughs> that's my thoughts anyways all right so there's the gray version and here is the Knight of Navy version. This one's a little more colorful and a little, maybe a little more cheery. The color scheme, I don't know. But then on the inside, is it like, I don't know. I do like that blue. That's the balmy blue as opposed to I have to go back and read all this stuff later on. Emboss the frame with the Suttles embossing folder. It could. So then, yeah. But yeah. So like cut out myself another stitched rectangle. One size larger. I'm not gonna show you my rectangles in here. See, I think I would go bigger than that yet even. So if I was to make this size, so cut out a piece of paper out this size, and then have this cut out, so it's kind of acts as a frame, and then run that through the settles embossing folder, yeah, that would work. I had also thought about um, stamping the buffalo check on the um, the card before I actually cut out the insert. That could have looked fun. Um, yeah, just all sorts, all sorts of ideas and options for sure. You could, you could even, you know, like just like I did with this layer, right? 
just add on a piece on the outside before you cut it out with say buffalo check or or running it through an embossing folder or it could even you could even do that brick pattern on the outside here as well anyways so there's two different color combos there's my envelope for the one and here's my envelope for the other they're basically the same the blue one was your high school colors nice buffalo check. yes i know i know <laughs> i love buffalo check absolutely love it anywho 30 minutes i feel like i should be doing something else <laughs> um what had i thought of? i thought of a I haven't I hadn't done a card yet that had say just hamburger and we could do ketchup and mustard and then the flames so I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to kind of do a card like that using those items like this don't know so anywho I've always wanted to be you know a little quicker with my video so <laughs> I guess today's the winner. <laughs> so once again, these will be on my blog later on today. Um, this is the last day I'm playing around with this um, outdoor barbecue set for now. And so if you want to get this, make sure you snag it before it retires. Purchase a $30 order or just this stamp set and I'm going to send you some of that silver foil that we kind of used on all of the projects this week. Also, I suppose I should tell you that there's a new catalog coming out and it is going to be live for you guys on June 3rd. And so if you want to get yourself a copy of that, that would be great. If you're not working with another demonstrator and you live in Canada, now you don't know what to do. <laughs> it's only 37 minutes. I know, right? Oh, sheesh. Uh, so ask for a catalog. Here is my website if you want to place an order. <gasps> Gina got her chop kit this morning. Awesome, you're the third one. I'm thrilled. I finally, uh, one person had gotten it, Natasha, no, yeah, Natasha had gotten it, then uh, Kathy from Manitoba had gotten it, now Gina. All right, so if you still need more time for that contest, let me know. Sherry got yours too? Awesome. Okay, so they're coming in now, and I know Mary just got her catalogs from Oh gosh, was that like, when did I send those? Like two, two and a half weeks ago? <laughs> Yikes. So the mail is just being slow. But we can extend the time period if you Canadian gals or if there's any Americans that haven't got your kit yet. We can extend the time a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. And as soon as you've got your card done, yeah, you haven't got yours, Amy. I would have thought you'd, you'd be the first one. If you don't live that far away, I could have walked faster. <laughs> Deadline's tomorrow? Isn't it the 20th? Uh, oh, sheesh, the 20th? Guess I should take that out. No chop there yet, Karen, hey? Okay, we won't do the deadline tomorrow. If it is tomorrow, we won't do it tomorrow. I don't even know what day it is. Is it... <laughs> So the 20th makes it next Wednesday, three weeks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, next Wednesday. So if we need to extend it, say 22nd, we can um, we can try for that one. If it's still not enough, we can we can extend it. But send me your pictures. Email me your pictures when you are done your project, so that I can start you know kind of loading it up on the site, so that we can let everybody start voting. Yeah, deadline's 20th. Okay, so we're only on the 15th, right? I hope. It can't be like the 20th already. I'm going to buy a courier pigeon. <laughs> hey, I'd, I'd buy shares in that. I, I would. <laughs> All right. Well, 
tomorrow. Make sure you check in on the Facebook page because I'm going to have a color challenge question for you. And Sunday, of course, share all your projects that you've been working on throughout the week. I love seeing that. doesn't have to be card related at all. Anything crafty, creative. Cooking to me is creative. <laughs> Take a picture of your supper. I don't care. <laughs> That's creative. Um, and yeah, no worries, Gina. This is a first time go. We've got an extenuating situa situation here. So um, all is good. All is good. Um, otherwise, I will see you Monday at 10 a.m. It is a holiday in Canada, but um, I don't think I'm doing anything. We were supposed to go back to Manitoba, but since they're still patrolling the border and we'd have to quarantine for 14 days even though we're just spending two there. <laughs> so I guess we're not going. So I don't think we have plans. So I hope to be here Monday morning. This is my happy place. This is what I want to do anyway. So, all right. We hope to see you then. Bye.